but God is good, isn't he? Amen. I want to preach to you today for just a little while on this thought, build a memorial. Build a memorial. Now, we know that tomorrow, Monday, May 31st, 2021, is Memorial Day. And contrary to what our wonderful vice president, Miss Harris, says, it's not just a long weekend to enjoy. Memorial Day is a national holiday in the United States of America and among its armed forces worldwide. It is a day that honors those brave men and women who have died fighting to preserve the freedoms of this nation and indeed the world. Amen. They have given their life. All gave some, but some gave all. And so today we honor them. So don't wish a veteran happy Memorial, a vet, Memorial Day or thank them for their service. This is not their day. They've got a day. Amen. This is a day that was known as originally Decoration Day and started way back after the Civil War and honoring the Civil War dead. And it is processed to where it is at today. National observance of Memorial Day is marked officially by the placing of a wreath on the tomb of the unknown soldier in Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. It is a day in the midst of our eating and our fellowshipping and our enjoying the day. It is a day to honor the sacrifice. Amen. To honor the sacrifice. Regardless that we have a generation of doofuses in this nation, deadly doofus, we got an overrun of deadly doofuses on one of the major college campuses this week. They pranked them, seeing how many college students, a major college, would sign a petition to outlaw Memorial Day. And they had so many signatures of those little <clears throat> college, university students who wanted to outlaw this imperialistic day of the glorification of American, so on and so forth. Amen. We as a people have forgotten the price that's been paid. Amen. We have a generation that has had to pay for nothing, that has had to earn nothing, that has had to sacrifice nothing, yet they demand everything. And that freedom is unappreciated, undervalued, and going to be lost if we don't treasure it again. Say amen. So Memorial Day is the day that hearkens us back to revolutionary war and forward. From D-Day and Normandy, from the thousands of lives, even that were lost, over 600,000 lives that were lost during the Civil War uh, in American casualties as North fought against the South. And so uh, we know that the tree of liberty has to be defended even by the blood of its supporters from time to time. And so today we honor all of those that paid the ultimate price for our freedom. Today, even as our nation has its memorials to the past and to the sacrifices and to those that gave all, and, and honors those like the Lincoln Memorial that honors the great president that Abraham Lincoln was and how that God used him in a terrible time during this nation to bring that nation back together and through the ravages of the Civil War. And so we understand that memorials are very important to a people. Why do you think the statues of the past have been targeted? 
did it? Why do you think the memorials of the past have been ripped down and pulled down and burned down? Because a people that will not remember where it's been cannot understand where it's at and neither have a grasp on where it's going. And so there is an element of foot that wants to rid America of all of its history, even rewrite its history. But we know that memorials are important to us as we the people. And I would say to you today that as important as those memorials are to us, we the people, amen, there are also spiritual memorials that are vastly more important to us, we the church of the living God. Can you say amen? Amen. Oh, yes. I believe that memorials must be a part of the life of every Christian. Every one of us in this room this morning, you must have your own memorials in your life. Not just one memorial, but I believe that the longer you live for God, the more memorials that you will create. You're not honoring something that is dead and no longer alive. No, no. Amen. A memorial helps us keep a memory of something significant alive in our hearts and in our minds. Come on, say amen. That memorial helps us to remember all throughout the Bible, God has ordained that there would indeed be be memorials. He has instituted the practice of building and having memorials in our life. Those sacred times, those sacred places, those divine encounters of where we met God and God met us all through the Old Testament. You find the people of God building an altar, making a memorial unto God, gathering stones out of a river and to make a memorial. Why? So that that mind could be rem reminded of what God had done for them. Listen, it's easy to forget today. It's easy to get caught up in this hour of worry, hurry, and bury. But there must be a place, ladies and gentlemen, that as children of God, we stop and remember. It said, that song said, when I think about the Lord and how he saved me and how he raised me and where he brought me from and what he done for me. I can't help but have a hallelujah. I can't help but declare when I think about my Ebenezer's, when I think about where God has brought me from, what God has done in my life, it makes me want to shout and praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody said, you don't have to act like that. I know, but it feels good. You don't have to take a bath either, but it feels good. Come on. Amen. In the biblical sense, a memorial is this, a sacrifice, a monument, or an event that makes us to remember, because we quickly forget, right? We quickly forget. And we don't even have Alzheimer's, but we quickly forget. I had a lady bless me out one time because she said I wasn't going to visit her sister in the hospital. Now, her sister had an advanced case of Alzheimer's. She wouldn't have remembered if a Martian landed in that room. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being degrading. I'm just telling you. So she was raking me over because when she got through, I said, well, let me tell you something. I said, do you know what your sister told me? She said, what? I said, she said, you ain't been to that hospital since she was put in that hospital. She looked at me, God's truth. She said, what? You can't pay no attention to her. She's crazy as crazy can be. If y'all only knew what we had to deal with sometimes, it's easy to forget. What did the scripture say? Forget not. Oh, my soul, 
all the benefits of the Lord. Don't forget God's blessing. Don't forget how God, a memorial is something that we give, a sacrifice it is a monument in our spiritual life or an event somewhere that helps us to be reminded of what God has done for us. The word memorial in the Bible uh, comes from a root word which means to prick, to pierce, or to penetrate the memory. Brother and sister, we quickly forget all of the goodness of God and all of the blessings of God. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and let me not forget all of his many benefits. Hallelujah. Brother, it's easy to get caught up in the burden of the day, in the trial of the day, in the test of the time, and forget all those times that God has moved and God has delivered and God has brought us out. I'm telling you, we need to remind ourselves. Sometimes you need to speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and say, look here, soul, you need to remember that God brought us out years ago. Yes, sir, everybody don't want to hear about your past history, but I can tell you, God loves to hear you bragging on him. God loves to hear us praising him and glorifying him. Brother and sister, God wants us to to never forget the ways that he moved, the times that he helped, the ways that he delivered and know that God is faithful. David said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Paul remembered his Damascus Road experience. David said, this poor man cried. In Exodus chapter 12, God ordained and commanded that the very first Passover was to be a memorial forever to the nation of Israel. Even still celebrated to this day, 4,000 years plus from the time of that fateful night, to remind them of how that God spared them when the death angel passed over Egypt and all of the firstborn of the Egyptians were slain. And also to remind them, Brother Rick, of God's mighty delivering power, of how that he brought Israel out of Egypt after 400 years of bondage, and he brought them out with a mighty hand, and they triumphed over the principalities and the powers of the greatest dynasty of that day. Let's read it, Exodus chapter 12, verse number 12. God speaking here says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. I know the young people don't always want to embrace the traditions of the older folk. One generation does not necessarily want to carry on the traditions of another generation. But God said, I'm telling you, you institute this and you remind every generation of how that I blessed and how that I moved by my miracle working power and I preserved life in the midst of death and you remind them from generation to generation. What did Netanyahu say some time ago? The God of Israel is going to fight for us and he is on our side and God will deliver us and they've kept that Passover even this year. Though they are far away from God, but God is still honoring that word of his to a people that has declared we will not forget. Brother, God is honor bound to his word and when he tells us to make a memorial and not forget where he's brought us from amen he intends to keep his word and he expects for us to keep our part of the deal and know that God is faithful if he delivered then he'll deliver now if he moved then he'll move now 
If God brought you through in that hour, he'll bring you through in this hour. If God kept you in the past, he'll keep you in the present. Say amen. Woo. If God kept his people in the Carter years, he'll keep us through the Biden days. Woo. <laughs> I tried, wife, it just slipped out. Glory to God. Oh, I'm telling you, God keeps his word. His biggest problem is helping me and you to remember what he's done. Amen, we get down and we whine and we moan and we, 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 you know, God, we're this, God, we're that. And God says, hey, have you forgot what I've done for you? Have you forgot when I delivered you from the expectation of the enemy? Have you forgot when I bailed your soul out of hell's jail? Have you forgot when I ransomed you off the auction block of sin? Have you forgotten how that I moved in your life and how that I supplied your need and I gave you a job when you didn't have a job? I gave you a home when you didn't have a home. I gave you children when you didn't have children. I gave you peace when you didn't have peace. I gave you joy when you didn't have joy. I gave you hope when you didn't have hope. I gave you bread when you didn't have bread. I gave you meat when you didn't have meat. I gave you the spirit of God when you were empty. I gave you more to dancing for more. I gave you new garments for the old tattered garments. I supplied everything, moved abundantly. Forget not the Lord nor all his many benefits unto his people. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes God has to pierce our memory. He has to penetrate our memory. Amen. Oh, praise God. We have to build some memorials. You notice, as you read the Old Testament especially, God didn't build the memorials. He told them to build the memorials. After they crossed over Jordan, after Israel crossed over Jordan into the promised land, God said, look here, this is what I want you to do. You take 12 stones and you put them in a heap in the Jordan River. Then you get 12 more stones and you put them on this side, not the side you come from, but on the new side. <laughs> he said, don't remember and build a memorial back to the slavery of the past. Hey, oh, some of you are not getting this this morning. Hey, amen. did somebody pass out a sign and said, don't say amen or raise your hands or clap in here, this is Memorial Weekend. Well, dear God, we've honored the dead, but you don't have to act dead. Come on, somebody. Hey, amen, thank God there is life, there is hope. God said, you put this memorial on the new side, this other side, this side you've crossed into. Why? Because it represents I'm crossing into a new life. I'm crossing into a new destiny. I'm crossing into a new way of living. I've left the old things behind behind me. I've heard the call of Jesus and I'm on my journey home. I've left the haunts of sorrow and despair. I'm walking with the righteous and I care no more to roam. Hallelujah. I've got a memorial built on this side and they said, God said him when they ask you, what does this mean in days to come and in generations to come? He said that father will tell his son this is where God brought us across. This is when God rolled back the Jordan River this is when God wrote a mighty miracle and brought us into our promised land never again to see what was behind us. We're never going back across that river. We're going forward into the blessings of God. That's why you build a memorial to thank God for the monumental experience that has transformed your life. That has transformed us, we've got to build some memorials. Amen. How many of you keep those little things your kids make in school when they're little? When they get big, you're just ready for them to get done. But when they're little and in children's church, you got the little handprints, you got the little flower pots, that was given for mama on Mother's Day. You got that one rose that you preserved in the midst of the family Bible because you knew it'd never be disturbed. (laughs) 
I'm glad y'all caught that. I was beginning to wonder about you. How many's got that? Them little Christmas ornaments that they made you? And how many ever now and then, whether it's at Christmas or sometime you, you're going through stuff and you find those things? And then this is what you do. You find it, you look at them, and then you sit down. Hallelujah. No wonder y'all don't get up. It's pretty comfortable. And you sit down and you start going through it. And then you start crying. And you're saying, God, why can't they be now like they was then? Why can't they be sweet instead of mean? Why can't they not know about money? Instead of spending all that they can get their hands on. Hello? You know it's a sad day in a parent's life when that child turns down coins and they start reaching for cash. It's a wonderful time when you can pull a quarter out and make a kid happy. Hello? But there'll come a day when that quarter will be rejected and they'll want a dollar. You ready for me to rock your world? There'll come a day when they'll snarl up at that dollar and they'll want a five. And then the five's gonna go to a 10. And the 10's gonna go to a 20. Hello, somebody. Amen, I'm telling you all that's how, but, but, but just for a moment, just for a moment, Lester, those, those little mementos of John Edward and Steve, they take you back to another time. Seem like a better time. Isn't it always seemingly a better time back there than it is right where we are? It, it just always seems to look better and oh, it blesses our soul and we start remembering it and we remember the funny things they said and, and if we're not careful, we'll take that and go put it up on the refrigerator, amen, and we'll look at it for a while because it blesses our soul and it reaffirms our, our calling as parents and moms and dads and lets us know that our children are really not aliens from another world. They really did come from you and you really did raise them and, and they're really basically good, decent human beings. Say amen, children. Emma said hallelujah. Yes, amen. The boys, they don't even know the war's over. Amen. Come on. Praise God. They take us back. That's what God wants us to do. Don't forget Hey, has God ever healed you? Build a memorial. Has God ever delivered you? Build a memorial. Has God ever set you free from drugs? Build a memorial. Has he ever set you free from alcohol? Build a memorial. Did he set you free from depression? Build a memorial. Hallelujah. Did he set you free from sin? Build a memorial. Did he baptize you in the Holy Ghost? Build a memorial. Did God deliver you from death? Build a memorial of life. Has God ever brought you out of financial bankruptcy? Then build through the flood, the fire, the famine, then build a memorial and let it be a place that brings you back to remembering the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, and that if God did it then, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. Build a memorial of the great things that God has done in your life. Don't forget. Don't forget. That was God's big problem with Israel. They were always forgetting. Forgetting what God said. Forgetting who he was. Forgetting what he had done. So we build those memorials. Not to live in the past. I know we don't go back and recapture. I mean, I'd love to pack up tomorrow and move to Mayberry right beside Andy and sit on the porch with him. I'd love to do that. Eat some Aunt B's fried chicken. I was watching the other night. They were sitting down to Sunday dinner. I told my wife, man, I'd like to sit down with them and eat dinner with them. Whew. Her cooking looked good. 
Say, she probably didn't even cook that. Stay out of my memory. That's my memory. Stay out of it. I would not even let Floyd cut my hair. That's how bad off I am. Whew. Glory to God. Amen. It's not that you idolize the past or that you live in the past, but how many knows every now and then we need to be encouraged? Every now and then we get down and we need to be lifted up. We get overwhelmed and we need some support. Amen. And we're not seeing stuff happening right then. Nothing is happening right then in our life. So what do we do? We reach back into our memory book of yesteryear and we start remembering what God has done. You write notes in your Bible. Amen. And a few years from now you'll read those again and say, oh, thank God I'd almost forgotten how low I was, but God raised me up. I'd almost forgotten the mess that I was in, but God has delivered me and brought me out from the miry clay and put my foot on the rock to stay and delivered me from the expectation of the enemy. Praise God. Listen, my last point, I know you can't believe this. We're going to get it over on all them folk that ain't here today. I know what you're saying. Well, we'll be here next Sunday too. Don't make us pay for them. Hallelujah. See, you can't win either way you go. I'm gonna close with this. Put the next screen up. Three reasons to build memorials. Three reasons. Number one, to increase our faith. Not just to remind us of what God has done in the past for us. Not just to give us a happy dance or happy feet, but to increase our faith. I have memorials in my spiritual life. I told someone, Brother David Owens, this past week we were talking about some of these things and I was referencing Brother Schutz's camp meeting in Lynn Haven, Florida. And I said every year that my wife and I went, God accomplished something definitive and definite in my life. In my life at that particular time. If that church was still standing, it was destroyed by one of the hurricanes that come through. They've rebuilt it or rebuilding. But if that original building was still standing, I could take you to pews in that church sanctuary where that I knelt down by that pew after the message that night and let the Holy Ghost wash over my soul and God done something definitive. I could take you to a room on the bottom floor of the Red Roof Inn where God awakened me one morning in that meeting a little before five o'clock and spoke to me as clearly as I'd ever heard the voice of God in my life. Brother, I'm telling you, those are memorials places where that, that humanity encountered deity. Amen. Where the creation met the creator. Where the saint met his savior. And God spoke to my life and altered my life and affected my life in a special way. Those are memorials to me. I could tell you about places around here where that I've laid on this floor and prayed and cried and the Holy Ghost would come by and watch my soul and water my spirit and renew my communion and commitment with God and brother those memorials increase my faith and help me to put on my big boy britches and hitch up my get along and say God if you brought me through then if you were faithful then you are no respecter of person today you are still able you still have the power and my faith is built and encourage for this trial. Amen. Don't forget, saints, where he's brought us from. Come on, Sister Bethany. Not only do, do our memorials bless us and encourage our faith, they can increase the faith of others. Tell what God has done. So I don't like to brag. It ain't bragging if you can back it up. Hello? Boast in the Lord. 
Paul said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus. Now, everybody don't want to hear about your I-I-ness. Huh? I did this. I did that. It's supposed to be about the Lord, but we make ourselves first person. Nobody wants to hear about that. But when you can bless the Lord, when you can brag on the Lord, when you can boast in the Lord, it builds faith. Our children today, amen, I want to believe, and I got to believe, and I will believe that part of their spiritual foundation and their footing when it comes to faithfulness to God and the faithfulness of God and tithing and missions and, and all of these a multitude of other things that part of that was shaped through the experiences of mama and daddy as we shared what God had done. Amen. Whether it was a, a miraculous means seemingly or through it was an individual or through the church or whatever. There's been more than one time we set them down growing up and said look a here this is where we were this is what we was up against and now we want to show you what God has done we have been faithful to God God I feel the Holy Ghost we've been faithful to God and God has been faithful to us let your generations know what God has done on your behalf tell them about your healing tell them about God's financial blessing tell them about God's provision tell them about God's purpose. Amen. Create a desire in their heart to encounter that same God and live for him and walk with him. Let them know. Let them know what he's done. Brag on him to them and teach them. If you'll honor him, if you'll give him something to bless young folk, He'll do the same for you. You gotta be committed. You build that memorial. It takes effort to build a memorial. It takes sacrifice to build a memorial. It may have been picking out the best lamb they had and cutting his throat and offering him as a burnt sacrifice to the Lord. It costs them something. You see, a memorial is based in cost. You value something based on the cost of it. Something that don't cost you much is not valued much. See, I've said a person's ability to resist temptation is based on the value of what they possess. You can resist having an affair on your wife if you value your wife and you love that treasure vice versa. You understand what I'm saying? And when we create this in these children that you bless God, it's going to take a sacrifice sometimes. Amen. You got to walk through the valley. The Hebrew boys had to be thrown into the fire before they were delivered from the fire. Daniel had to be thrown into the den of lions before he was delivered from the den of lions. But you got to let them know God is faithful. And third, those memorials can give us victory over the devil. Huh? You ever run up against anything lately and the devil says, well, there ain't no need to pray about it. Prayer's not going to help. That's when you should automatically know, wham, prayer's going to help. Because anytime the devil tells you it's not going to help, it's going to help. He's just trying to psychologically subvert spiritually what God can do and wants to do in your heart and your life. And so those memorials will help us when the devil says you're not saved. We can take him back to the memorial when we met Christ at Calvary and he washed us in his blood and saved us and redeemed us and regenerated us by the power.
power of the Holy Spirit and transformed our life. And we went from darkness to light. Amen. We went from deadness to life. Thank God we went from a sinner to a saint. And we can take him back like that old song says. I can tell you now the time. I can take you to the place where the Lord saved me by his wonderful grace. But I cannot tell you how, for I know not the how. And I cannot tell you why, for I know not the why. But we'll understand it in the by and by. You can take the devil back to your memorial and say, no, devil, you're a liar. This is where God helped me. This is where he saved me. This is where he forgave me. This is where he cleansed me. This is where he set me free. Oh, come on, stand to your feet. Just 